Today, we're diving into a fundamental topic in web design that can make your layouts look polished and professional. We're going to explore the differences between CSS Flexbox and Grid, and I'll walk you through each step with clear examples so you can see how these powerful tools work and when to use them. Flexbox is designed for laying out items in one dimension, either in a row or a column. Let's start by creating a basic container in HTML that will style using CSS to clearly see the difference between Flexbox and Grid. This dev with the class container will be the main box that holds everything. We're adding a border to it in CSS to make it easier to see as we go along. Now, let's give our container a visible border to make it easier to track as we build our layout. We'll refresh the page to see this in action. Next, let's add some items inside our container to see how Flexbox handle them differently. Each dev inside the container is given the class item. We'll add some style to these next. Let's add some basic styling to each item so we can see them as individual boxes. Let's refresh and check the page to see our item styled within the container. Now let's apply Flexbox to our container. This will help us see how Flexbox distributes items in a flexible way. Display, Flex. This turns our container into a Flex container. Items inside will align on a single row by default. Before we continue, let's talk a little about the main axis and cross axis. Let's see the difference between the main axis and the cross axis. Items in Flexbox are arranged horizontally or vertically depending on whether you specify row or column for your flex direction. This main direction is what we call the flex item's main axis. The perpendicular direction is therefore the cross axis. If the elements are arranged horizontally in a row, the main axis is horizontal and the cross axis is vertical. If the elements are arranged vertically in a column, the main axis is vertical and the cross axis is horizontal. Now that we understand that, let's continue. Exploring Flexbox properties flex direction. The flex direction property controls the direction items are laid out. Row, default items are arranged in a row, left to right. Column, items stack vertically. Row reverse and column reverse. Arrange items in reverse order. Justify content. The justify content property aligns items along the main axis. Center, centers items in the container. Flex start, aligns items to the start. Flex end, aligns items to the end. Space between, spreads items with space between. Space around, spreads items with space around them. Since we're about to use the align items property, which works along the cross axis, I'll set a height of 100 pixels to help you see the effect as we try out different values for. Align items, aligns items along the cross axis, perpendicular to the main axis. Let's try some values one to see how items align differently within the container. Center, aligns items to the center on the cross axis. Stretch. Default stretches items to fill the container height. Flex start and flex end. Aligns items to the start or end. Now that we've explored Flexbox, let's turn our focus to CSS Grid. If you're enjoying my approach to explaining these concepts, consider subscribing to my channel, giving a thumbs up, and sharing the video with others. CSS Grid is especially powerful for creating complex, two-dimensional layouts that involve rows and columns. First, let's create a basic HTML structure. We'll start with a container dev and add four items inside it. Each of these items will fill one cell in our grid layout. Let's add some basic CSS to give our container and items some visibility. We'll add a border to the container and each item so we can see how they're laid out on the page here. We've added a border around the grid container to see its boundaries. The same for each grid item.
Now, let's refresh the page to see what this looks like. This helps us see each item clearly as we build the grid layout. To start using CSS Grid, we'll set Display Grid on our container. This will enable grid-specific properties and allow us to control the layout. By adding Display Grid, we're telling the browser that this container should use grid layout. But currently, nothing looks different because we haven't defined the structure of the grid yet. Let's do that next. Now, let's create a 2x2 two two grid by adding grid template columns and grid template rows. We'll set each column and row to 1 FR, meaning they will each take up an equal portion of the available space. Grid template columns. 1 FR, 1 FR. Sets up two columns. Each column takes up one fraction, 1 FR of the available width so they'll each be equal in width. Grid template rows. 1FR, 1FR, sets up two rows. Each row takes up one fraction, 1FR, of the available height, so they'll each be equal in height as well. Let's add some space between our grid items using the gap property. This makes the layout look cleaner by adding a little space between each item. The gap property adds space between each item in the grid. Let's refresh the page again to see the final result. Each item should now be in its own cell within a 2x2 two two grid layout, with equal size columns and rows and a nice gap between each item. Key differences between Flexbox and Grid. Flexbox, one-dimensional layout, row or column. Best for simple layouts, like navigation bars or aligned elements. Grid, two-dimensional layout, rows and columns. Ideal for complex layouts like dashboards or gallery layouts. Thanks for watching. I hope this helped you understand when to use Flexbox versus Grid. Try experimenting with both to see which one fits your project.